Tonight's special guest, Oliver Hartmann, again. Hi, everybody. Yeah, he did it on episode 25, on episode 62, and now we are... And in, in, in 54. Okay. <laughs> yeah. In the summer of 69. In the summer of 69, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. In D major, I guess that song starts, right? <laughs> A D minor. I got this. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. <coughs> uh, we are in a good mood because tonight we are doing um, special topics um, about what's going on with the mic. Mute. Ah, I have to mute. Ah. Oliver is a great singer. Mute Oliver. No, no, no. Now it's good. Okay. Um, as we could hear, he's not only a great guitar player, he's also a killer singer. And that's why I had to switch off the mic. That was... Okay coming from... Always switch up the microphones of good singers. <laughs> yeah. Rule yeah. number one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. How to turn your Les Paul into a tone monster. Yeah. And you are actually one of those Les Paul nerds uh, that played Les Pauls for basically all your life? Not all my life. I started uh, as a shredding kid in the 80s. Of course, I started with a power strut. And with long hair. With long hair. Oh, we have, long we have hair. a picture that proves yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we see that picture? That's, that's pretty, pretty nice. And this picture is about you... Uh, it was in 92. 92. I think it was the first fair in Frankfurt on the Music Messe mm -hmm. where I played for Jörg Tandler. Yeah. That we will have as guests later on. On in this and, episode? Uh, yeah. Who and is and, and I still, still have this guitar. Yeah. Not in baby blue. I convinced him to, to, to change the finish into... Vintage Y. Today I would be <laughs> lucky to still have that in, in baby blue. Yeah? Yeah. But at that time it wasn't really, how to say, metal, you know. Yeah. And see, this is my Tundler um, Strat, which is kind of a replica of a six, uh, f sorry, 56, um, well, maple neck uh, Strat with a V-neck. And I forced him into doing that classic shape of guitars because he has done his own design which were great but you know as traditional <laughs> uh, we wanted to have those uh, original strats so guitarists are very conversive uh, con conservative conservative conversative yeah, conversative, yeah. <laughs> a new word yeah and this is called the cat burst finish because we couldn't agree on the vintage color but uh, i think it looks great it, it looks I'd, great it, I, i'd love to have a guitar like this see you know um, I, I think I asked stylish. him for, for, for a sunburst or something. I said, nah, I'm not going all the way. Because that's crumpy Jörg. And Jörg is a character, but he makes very, very good guitars. And you also still have that split, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I have this. With that coil? Every, this yeah, is yeah, my yeah. dummy coil. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Every guitar I that, that I one. play, yeah, yeah. I have this. Yeah. But okay, um, not talking about strats, um, talking about Les Pauls tonight. Um, maybe we have. Um, to explain a little bit more about Oliver Hartmann before we dive into that topic. We played at the Guitar Summit in 2019 yes. with Billy Sheen, uh, Paul Gilbert, Paul Gilbert uh, um, Henrik Freischlader, the Pete German, Thorne, Pete Thorne there, the guitar player from Opeth. Yeah. yeah. Great and, guitar player. And Stu Hamm. Stu Hamm. And... Ralf Guske on drums. Uh, Ralf Guske on drums. Yeah. I don't even remember. Yeah. Too many, too many great, shows. Too many shows. Too, too, many, too shows. many great people. Yeah. Um, it was Four years is a lot of time. Yeah, yeah. Pa that passed by. But um, yeah, it was big, big fun. Um, and you guys should see um, Ollie's trailer because that explains what you are actually doing. Or oh, yeah. you know, like yeah. uh, there's a. Um, Pink Floyd's project. I have a Pink Floyd tribute, yeah, it's called called Echoes. Yeah. It's pretty famous. But I also have my own project it's called Hartmann, Hartmann. My sure. last name. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's what, what I would say it's it's melodic, modern, hard rock yeah. AOR. Just yeah. what we, we heard. Is it is it a yeah. new single? Is it a new this this is the new single that just came out as a video on YouTube five days ago. Yeah, see? Yeah. So we played a Hartmann song. So when you're on YouTube now, yeah, check after that out. The, yeah, yeah, check it out. Yeah. Cool. Um, it's called Just Drive. And then there's the uh, Avantasia uh, project. Hey, just yeah. watch the trailer. Yeah. We show it, you the trailer so you know what time it is with Oli Hartmann. We are 
So that's Oli Hartmann's musical project. Yeah. And besides musical projects, you are twiddling and fiddling around with um, Les Pauls and other guitars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, we had a few uh, phone calls about hardware, about pickups, about you know um, things we can change on a Les Paul hmm. uh, to change or improve. Or let's say on a, on a single cut guitar yeah. that has the same, let's say, system as a, as a Les Paul. Yeah. Yeah. I can see in the comments, people comment on the next guitar you are yeah. using. And uh, what's the story with that? How can I say? I, I've been endorsing <laughs> FGN guitars, uh, a Japanese brand, a great brand, since 2011. But this year I decided to, to change to, 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 due to many reasons. Although they still build great guitars, because I got in contact again with Peter Wolf yeah. of uh, Next Guitars, he was, he was, before that he was, was managing uh, PIS P P P together with Joe Nax, the, the master builder at PIS. And they, they opened up uh, an own company years yeah. ago. And we've already been in contact years before. And he always offered me to, to play guitar. And for me, it, it never felt right to, to, be, to have an endorsement with another brand and, and to play uh, the guitars. For. So I just contacted him because I always loved the guitars because Every guitar I ever had in my hands on the music fair was simply great, outstanding. No, nothing that you have to change. Maybe, okay, we will talk about that later. Maybe the fitting pickup for your sound, and that's all. Mm. Because these guitars are perfect. Right. You know? yeah. So I'm really happy to, to endorse these guitars now, and uh, yeah, that's the reason why. 
Yeah, and mm, Peter right. Wolf is is quite a character Absolutely. guy. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and I know him from back in the days in Germany when he was uh, working in uh, Pro Sound Koblenz. The funny story is with my first band. I was 16 years old. Yeah, I went there with a bass player to buy the first mixing desk yeah. and a reverb station and some cables and microphones and that stuff with the first band. And I can still remember there was Peter Wolf sitting there and yeah. selling us that stuff. Yeah. And he sold me ages ago. my first real Fender Strat, which okay. was total shit, but he couldn't do anything about it because <laughs> Fender Strats were so shitty at, yeah, yeah. in these days. And don't blame him. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, you yeah. know, so it all goes around, comes around, and we, you know, I'm always saying this, this music business industry is so small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Be nice. You or always you, meet or, twice. Or you, yeah. Yeah. Be nice, you always meet twice. Yeah. That's correct. Um, yeah. So I also have a little episode on Les Pauls. Everybody knows that I'm a Strat guy, but I always also had Les Pauls uh, in my life as a session guitar player in the 90s. And um, I had a Black Beauty early 70s. Um, are they called Black Beauty actually, or, or you know the one with the ebony, almost very dark? Fretboard? I think I think the real Black Beauties are these early customs. Custom, that, yeah. The customs that, but but they still had a mahogany top, as far as I know. What is a real original Black Beauty? Because later on, they they all did the, uh, uh, maple tops. But don't ask me. Oh, yeah. Back in the days. I had one of those and it did a good job on power chords. Absolutely. But, but yeah. I was also interested in get it, getting Gary Moore tones. Yeah. And yeah, you don't get it out of No, a, no, this was not the right guitar fretboard. for no. that. Yeah. No. You know, and see, this is what we can learn. Even though it's the same model, a Les Paul, yeah. it can be on that side or on that side. It can be, you yeah. know, on the where we open side with uh, a lot of air and breathe and yeah. bluesiness. But it can also be on the tight side, which is, you know, a, a killer uh, riffing guitar. That's what I used uh, uh, my old uh, 78 Les Paul Custom for the first two of Avantasia. Mm -hmm. When it comes to, let's say, more metal sounds, mm -hmm. a little mid scoop, very tight bass. And, and this is from the era where, where they used maple necks. Mm. Uh, with, with what also sounds different to the normal mahogany neck. But this guitar was perfectly working for these kind of sounds. Right? Mm -hmm. And for me, it was also a journey up until I ended with this one. This mm -hmm. is kind of that Les Paul that I, I kind of like. I mean, mm -hmm. there's even a better one that inspired me to have a gold top. <laughs> um, we will see a little video later on. But um, not for a better price. Uh, no. <laughs> and it's it, it, it can't be bought because it's belonging to a friend of mine and uh, it's his guitar. But this one here is really killer and I, I hate him <laughs> that he loves this guitar because otherwise I would buy it. <laughs> yeah, that's always a problem that we yeah, have. Yeah, yeah. I love something. stuff that yeah. we share certain... Um, yeah. um, okay. Before we dive into um, hardware pickups and bridges and you know electronics on the guitar, um, we thought about what's important when you play guitar just like dry. Mm -hmm. Is there a shreng? Is there? A... Mm -hmm. And you can hear some sustain. Yeah. And then you can hear clarity, you can hear attack, dynamic. You can hear the whole frequency response. Already. Of, of the whole band, where you really, it, it's not, how to say, the, the 100% when you play it acoustic, yeah. but it, it shows like, let's say, 70 to 80% where of you the will character. possibly end yeah. up when, when you turn on the amplifier. Yeah. And that's already the wood and the hardware. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And uh, of course, the pickups will then color the tone or transmit the tone in a certain way to the amplifier. But before we talk about that stuff, we have somebody that has actually a lot more clue about wood oh, and yes. guitars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it's actually the guy we talked about at the beginning, Jörg Tandler. Um, the oracle of wood. Yeah, it, it, I mean, he, you know, uh, 
that's a still a solid great guitar and this one's really really good yeah. Oh, yeah and 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 everybody that owns one of his guitars usually keeps them yeah. because whatever else is in your collection they're so good <laughs> um, you simply have to keep them yeah. it's my best maple neck guitar i'm not a yeah. maple neck guitar player but when i need one that's my choice uh just for fun it's, it's the same for me i just got one maple neck strat and this one is from Jörg. yeah yeah and here just just give you a, a slight impression about that guitar <laughs> Absolutely love these, let's say, woody, dry mids that you get from a maple neck. Yeah. yeah. And that's, and that's you know, a luthier like Jörg can, can, he knows how to get it right with, with such a guitar and choose the right wood and mm. blah, blah, blah. He knows it. We have a little interview that we just recorded before this uh, live. And he will explain what's important when it comes to, well, the basis, the foundation of the guitar when we talk about wood. Jörg Tandler. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a real big pleasure and honor to have one of Germany's greatest guitar luthiers in the house, who actually built me this guitar maybe 30 years ago. And um, yeah, he always knew what time it is when it comes to guitars woods and stuff mr jörg tandler um jörg it's been a while that we actually met but uh you know we spent a lot of time back in the days in the 90s maybe um i i think i have two of yours guitar your guitars one of the other guitar this is the electric uh, one of the acoustic guitars actually made it in the top 10 on a very mm -hmm. ugly song balaman hits <laughs> But hey, so it pays. It, it could pays be worse. A, it yeah. could be worse. It paid a price. Um, at least it pays off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> um, so, from from your side, what does it take to make a good Les Paul um, to date? To <laughs> <laughs> and remember, we don't have four hours time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and that's easy with a good guitar. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we got that. Yeah, yeah okay. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Okay. Uh, yeah, but I mean, I mean, you can you can you can write books on 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 that subject. Yeah. With maybe a thousand pages. <laughs> <laughs> but but what what is main your main criteria? So when when you select the wood, um, is is there anything? You, you you find this a, a rule of thumb that you like and other people maybe disagree or what what is your is is there any like the the five commandments something simple for the guys to understand <laughs> yeah i think i have something yeah okay. uh, uh, a lot of people disagree with me uh, uh, concerning the weight of the guitars <laughs> <laughs> I usually choose a, a, a medium weight uh, uh, Honduran mahogany for my guitars, which sounds best for me. It's, uh, in my opinion, uh, uh, delivers the best balance. When they are too light, mm -hmm. and we can talk kilos here. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> let's say everything below 3.8 kilograms which in pound might be uh, whatever eight eight pound eight eight pound two or so approximately yeah. eight pound i think they they sound thin harsh they don't have cojones <laughs> or balls balls <laughs> yeah. and, and uh, uh, screaming upper mid-range I don't. I don't like that sound. Mm -hmm. So, in my opinion, uh, 
The ideal Les Paul should have about four kilograms to 4.2 kilograms, which is quite handleable, handleable uh, uh, when you got it on the strap. It's not too heavy. Mm -hmm. So that's a and solid of piece of you wood. Don't want, you don't want you don't want a guitar with with five five point five kilograms. Yeah, not really. No, no, no. Mm. Especially not in our age, you know, you're starting <laughs> like this in, in a, on a stage, you know. Yeah. But yeah. the one that I have from you, I got a, I got a beauty to one of uh, Jörg Tandler's Les Pauls because we, we know each other since we are, I don't know, 16, 17. Mm -hmm. And uh, I once asked him to, to build me a real great, good sounding Les Paul in the style of a 59 Les Paul. And I still have it. And it's, it's one of my best guitars that I, that I have. And this one has got four kilo. So it's not too heavy, not too light, but it's way balanced right in all frequencies. And it's still and you know fast. What? You know what? If you have a good hard maple top on your list, Paul, if it's a standard, uh, uh, the top alone is about one kilogram. So it's almost even uh, uh, not doable. <laughs> to make a Les Paul with uh, 3.5 kilos with with these kind of woods without scooping the body out. Yeah, yeah. chambering is, yeah. It, that, is that's, cheating. That's without what you chambers, told me. It's, it's yeah. not possible. That's what you told without me about chambers. my guitar, that, that it has a really heavy um, uh, hard maple top. It's a really around like one, hard one, maple top on one your kilo. guitar. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and it's got really, it's very light mahogany, and it really sounds like very, very fat low mids that are that are rarely yes. found on on lighter Les Pauls, even if they're new or old. Yeah. That's what I call cojones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. this one has got a lot of cojones. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything special you're looking for in the necks? Uh, like yeah, they don't have to be too thin. <laughs> from the measurements and mahogany is a medium hard wood and uh, not that stable compared to rock maple like on a strat neck for example yeah and uh, if you shape it too thin it's, it's even with rock maple if you shape it too thin you're losing sustain mm -hmm. and uh and attack, right? Maybe, and maybe you get in dead spots uh -huh. on, on your guitar if the neck is too thin. Uh -huh. So uh, I like necks in the in the 59, 58, style. 59 style, like on, on vintage, uh -huh. vintage Gibson Les Paul guitars. These necks are perfect for me. But for is it right that you also get, get like a little more attack, especially on, 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 fatter necks or more fat necks uh, than, you than when you have uh, uh, do you mean um, the response the response yeah 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 yeah. no that's this has nothing to do with the thickness of the neck okay this is uh, the fastness of your response is uh, uh, mainly built up by other factors so how the neck is set well, you mm -hmm. need a proper in, that's, that's the main thing is a proper uh, a proper set neck yeah. so uh, not a loose joint there mm -hmm. you want you want a good a good fit in in the neck pocket for your for your teen on okay and and yes. this and 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 good glue joints see on uh, the you're gluing the fretboard on on the top of of the of the tenon and, and on on the on the maple top too, so all these glue joints has to has, has to be very uh, tight for a fast response. Okay. You, another another thing is uh, uh, the uh, the fit of the frets. Mm -hmm. yeah. If the frets are uh, uh, pressed in too loose. Uh, your response uh, uh, will be poor, mm -hmm. and if you have a, a a good fit, a tight fit, yeah, the guitar will be faster too. Yeah. So yeah. that doesn't matter so much on a new guitar. 
because you're usually as a luthier or in a factory you install the the frets correct yeah but yeah. Uh, you hear differences differences in in uh, doing repair jobs mm -hmm. there you sometimes have the problems of uh, the the frets too loose must be glued in and uh, uh, there you hear the differences and and if a fret uh, only holds by by glue that totally sucks mm -hmm. okay so the, the the connection of the metal and the wood is important yes they, yeah, they have right. to tra tra transfer the vibration mm -hmm. or whatever yeah. um, that's a bad it's, it's a good uh, that's a good term for it yeah that the transfer is bad the tone transfer mm -hmm. that's maybe the same same like uh, uh, a saddle on a on a tunomatic bridge mm -hmm. yeah if there you have a oftentimes you have a very bad fit of the the bridge saddles mm -hmm. and there you lose a lot of tone mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah it, okay it, it's many 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 things by the way this is a 56 uh mm -hmm. les paul jr and this has also a, a nice um yeah round fat neck this is a very nice neck yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, um not too thick not too thin it's a very does. nice slim 59 yeah. neck yeah what, what i would yeah. call a 59 neck uh, by the way looking at this guitar because this is one of the guitars that originally had these long neck tenons what means that the 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 neck set in in in, in the body is is a bit longer you once told me that it doesn't make that much difference uh when, when it comes to sound of a guitar <laughs> because there's a big doesn't discussion make, about that yeah? uh, the the length of the tenon doesn't matter at all okay as long as as the tenon itself has a good glue joint on the uh in the body itself okay yeah not even uh right or left it's just that the glue joint uh um uh, inside the, the cavity uh, this yeah. way mm -hmm. so this mm -hmm. this way you can have airspace doesn't matter but mm -hmm. this this glue joint has to be tight okay uh, what happens when you have a a, a long tenon and you are routing a a neck pickup you destroy the tenon because mm. the wood fibers don't have uh, uh you you're cutting the wood fibers yeah so on a junior maybe it makes maybe that works a little yeah. difference yeah, yeah. because because it doesn't, have, it doesn't have a neck pickup right, right. Yeah. so uh, these guitars are actually uh a bank for a good tone sure okay uh, but when you have uh, double pickup guitars it's it's gonna get interesting of course <laughs> I, I got one question because we, yeah. we we're discussing this this topic today because I also did a, a video uh, on that. Um, we've been also talking about weight reliefing guitars because it makes sense to to use good woods to have a, a thin finish and the right finish um, for a guitar and and to to build a guitar right. But doesn't make it, does does it make a difference to to weight relieve a guitar when it comes to sound and at what point? of weight relieving does it start to 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 really uh, uh, get clunky yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It, it does make a difference you can uh, uh, make weight reliefs weight, re weight relief holes in a Les Paul guitar body without uh, uh, ch uh, changing the character the overall character mm. of the guitar uh, then you have to do let's say uh put it in a term uh, uh a multiple uh um, multiple chamber system mm -hmm. when you apply a multiple chamber system with really small small chambers or holes yeah? okay you, because, you, because uh, i got something here <laughs> from 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 an x-ray experiment that i did yesterday <laughs> and this is one of the typical Modern weight relief yeah. uh, Gibson guitars. You may, maybe also know One these these early ninety yeah. ones, but are called Swiss holes. Yeah, j just in the back behind uh, uh, um, the tailpiece. But this is maybe yeah, this is really fully chambered, but also just small and big chambers here and there. 
Um, uh, but so I, I really think good. this already affects the sound. Not too yeah. much, but you can hear it. This is this is quite a lot, I would say. Yeah, yeah it's quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you have to you have to be to to be to take care, uh, putting your holes where it does on on points where it doesn't matter. Yeah, this is again the thing uh, the wood fiber connection. Yeah, it's um, see the 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 Les Paul guitar body has a real narrow waist. Mm -hmm. All holes you're putting uh, uh, to the left and to the right of the waist mm -hmm. don't matter mm -hmm. because it's a dead mass anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but <laughs> but when you when you think of uh, of two lines mm -hmm. uh, right from the waist. Mm -hmm. Or in the in the width of the waist, yeah? mm -hmm. all holes you put in there make Will a matter. difference. Yeah. So so when I get it they right, um, yep. all this here is not that problematic, but this here is maybe not that good, right? Yeah. Behind the tailpiece, oh, well, they are already too big. They yeah. are already too big. Okay. Hmm. See the waist, the waist on this guitar, and the the chambers already interfere with the with the waist yeah. with yeah okay. That's okay too much yeah but Just of course this helps the companies as gibson to, yeah. to to build still good sounding or okay sounding guitars with the like say 3.6 kilos you know they, they okay. have different sy systems there you know yeah. this is just one system i have yeah. an x-ray of an old guitar on my on my uh, uh, computer here and it they they only used uh uh, uh Fosnerbohr has the German name. Uh they just bored it out with with uh with a diameter of about thirty millimeters. Oh that's in little fifties. Ah oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, this little. Yeah. 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 And and this is almost you, you don't hear a difference to a solid body. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you don't overdo it. What's mm -hmm. not good is doing holes behind the bridge and the tailpiece. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. leave that out, leave a block in there, a solid yeah. block there. To the left and to the right, it almost doesn't matter if the holes are mm -hmm. not too big. That's what I meant with <laughs> a, with that V in these typical modern weight relief yeah. Gibson guitars behind the tailpiece. It's too and, much. Uh, this is yeah. this much, much too much. It so totally, you say that they already uh, did that in, in the 50s? Yes. You have just what, mentioned what I saw on X rays. Yeah. What I saw on X rays, uh, because I had the chance to <laughs> on a fifty seven gold topless Paul, was just holes. Okay. Bore holes mm -hmm. from a drill from a drill. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But Fine. what they did, and and what what you sometimes can uh, uh, can uh, check yourself on an old guitar on a vintage, on a vintage Les Paul is when you uh, plug it with your with your knuckle yeah yeah and uh at some degree at some time in the factory yeah that's this solid. is not solid you, you hear that? here it's solid knock knock on the uh underneath the cutaway here between the in, yeah yes there 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 is a there is a chamber you hear that yeah yeah Mm -hmm. And this is this is usually a chamber, and I don't know when they introduced that one, maybe in '58 or something. Mm -hmm. They were experimenting with with cavities in uh, already in the '50s. Oh, yeah. And uh, I even had a, a 1960 Les Paul standard here on my workbench with a cavity similar size to the one we heard now. Mm -hmm. But on the opposite side of the body. Okay. So hmm. they were always experimenting, checking out things. Yeah. Experimenting. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's hmm. interesting to know. Huh. Hey, Jörg. And this is yeah. 
Um, okay. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Hey, we have to, we have to get you back here, and we have to get you like in a full deep dive thing. But for for to for tonight, I'm super happy about yeah. all these insights. For now, um, we have to to show the guys your yeah. workshop another time. Yeah. We have to show. We we actually should come to your place because it is the real unique. deal. <laughs> it's unique. Yeah. It's Invited. unique. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If we get some Tafelspitz, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is uh, the dish. Of... <laughs> the My dish wife of... will be happy to make some. Yeah, it's super. We love it. Um, yeah, um, thanks so much for, for, for now. Um, we have you back um, hopefully soon because there's so much more we can talk. And uh, thanks so much for your well very profound knowledge because absolutely yeah. what what we know and maybe some people know you here in germany um we have people like andreas Klopmann who does the pickups they all highly respect what you have done on guitars whenever i have a guitar mm. that comes from yours and he puts in his pickups and sees one of mm. yours he says wow you know The way it's the same as Heusel, for example, or other yeah. guitar builders. They're like, oh, oh, it's a tumbler. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so the guys who know, they know what time it is, and Jörg knows what time it is because um, I think you, you, you studied even building violins and stuff. So, you have a, a, a proper training. You're not just a guy that does something. Well, I, would call it, I would call it I'm a trained luthier. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, with tons of experiences, And he's a killer guitar player too. You know, he's got a tone. He is the Mr. Non-Compromise. He plays 200 watt amps <laughs> and 100 watt only for the effects if needed. Yeah. And the rest is to make everybody suffer <coughs> and enjoying life. But this is Jörg Tandler, you know, the, the man who is not about compromise. And this is what we love him for. <laughs> okay. Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks Jörg. Cheers. Thanks for taking the time. Yep. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> yeah, Jörg Tantler, the man who knows everything. Cars, everything. No, yeah. he knows a lot. But I think it's uh, interesting to, to have different people with uh, experience and we can all share the knowledge. You know, there's um, Absolutely, yeah. Jörg Tantler, there's, uh, you know, all the guys that we know. Yeah. You know, Häusel, yeah. I know Klopmann, and they all. Oops. I have to switch on my mic. It's important. Colleague. Okay, Can you now hear I'm, me? <laughs> okay, finally I'm back. So, um, all the knowledge, you know, that, that's that's flying around, it's great to have different sources. And um, yeah. Jörg is one of those experienced guys. Um, well, we talked about chambered guitars, mm. non-chambered guitars, the difference. Um, Jörg taught us about the problem of um, it can be yeah it, the tone can suffer but there's mm -hmm. also ways not to suffer but mm -hmm. maybe you can just show two or three guitars mm -hmm. and how they sound dry without an amp and with an amp um, to get a feel of what's going on just from the yeah, wood yeah, and yeah. chambering and so let's let's change from this next here which is also not weight relieved This is a true solid guitar. So we take this custom shop here. Mm -hmm. It's my Les Paul baby. Um, what, this what? is a very light Les Paul, but it's, it's not chambered. It's, okay. it's massive. What, what, what is it? This is a custom shop? It's That's... a custom shop. It's, it's a Murphy Lab. Okay. Uh, this is serious money. I, 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 yeah, pretty I, serious money. Yeah, yeah. Like officially... I, the funny thing is, I, I just went to Toman <laughs> with, my, with my girlfriend, with my lady. Yeah. Because oh. she's also a cello player, but she wasn't there for many, many years. And uh, uh, she said, let's go to Toman. I want to see the shop. And I said, like, yeah, okay, let's go there. <laughs> and, I, and I just went there to, to have a look. And I went up to the, to the expensive club yeah. uh, in the, on the second floor. The custom shop. The custom shop. shop. I go, wow, this is a nice guitar. Let's take it. Uh, and I just played one because I, I want to have it. <laughs> Can I please have a cable? Yeah. 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 That's yeah. the story behind this one, mm -hmm. and it's, it's it's a really great guitar. Mm -hmm. It's a great razor netting guitar. It's got nice mids, mm -hmm. 
And uh, uh, but it's not weight relief. This it's pretty light. It's about three point eight kilos. What is let's say eight point one. You can trans. I don't know the power. Whatever, ratio. and it's 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 really beautiful. It's yeah. nice, and this one is not chambered. It's got lots of mitts because it's, it's very light. But it's. Yeah. Got nice mitts. It's, it's com it comes close to this one, but this one is played for ages, so, yeah? Yeah. It's got the same kind kind of mids, but Character, this one is a little yeah. heavier. Yeah. So, yeah. Nice one, nice one. Yeah, it's also yeah, a good thing to play it dry without an amplifier. This is how the guitar sounds. Mm -hmm. Lots of treble, but not too much. Mm -hmm. Nice mids, very dry bass. This will also change when you play it for a couple a of few years, years so, yeah. so the whole frequency shifts response shifts to the from, lower mid yeah. range, and then yeah. and then it's and this yeah. is what I love. Yeah, absolutely. So this one is new, so you have to I really have to play it for a few years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Play faster, more play notes. Play faster, you know, more notes. Agent, you know. With maybe maybe agents earlier. Next one we got is this one. Um, so thanks again to Simon Gauff of uh, Guitar Point at Frankfurt, a vintage shop that you should all know. He gave this one to me and another guitar to show the difference uh, and in sound when it comes to weight relief. This one is weight relieved. It's not completely chambered, but it's weight relieved. You can also hear when you the resonance. Knock on the back. Yeah. So when you're pretty experienced, you can you can hear possibly that it's uh, uh, weight relieved. So this one, it's got still nice mids, but for my opinion, a bit too much. I'm missing a little bit of that clarity that I heard before. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like so much when it comes to those poles, when you turn on the, the neck, neck pickup, yeah, and it, when it's just it's for me. Yeah. It's it's about how much wood I do here. Is the yeah, wood yeah. talking to me? Yeah, yeah, yeah you know yeah, that's yeah. the way I would describe it. But it's definitely a good guitar. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But it's weight relieved, so this was maybe got like I don't know, three point six kilos. What is I don't know, seven point nine pounds or whatever. You know, really light. Mm -hmm. So we have this one, mm -hmm. and then we have this one. Oh yeah, this is for grandpas like me. <laughs> yeah, being uh, yeah, you, you can you can directly hear it here. Yeah. yeah? This one is completely chambered, yeah. and it's also sold as chambered. Yeah, you know? of course. So there's just the middle block is massive until here, here, and everything else is hollow. When it comes to the to the dry sound, you can hear it sounds more like in uh, ES 335, yeah? but not bad. Yeah. Yeah, of course.
Yeah, for me, I'm missing that punch in the mids. That's what you don't have. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. it's oh, yeah. a different style, which yeah, yeah. is okay, but... You have lots of mids, but at a, at a different different spot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's not the punchy mids in the upper mids. Oh, yeah. But, this, but of it, course it helps to, to, to make you feel that the guitar reacts very fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? It, it's, it is open. It is open, it, it breathes, it does all that stuff. So if you like that... It's okay. a perfect guitar for you. So there's Thanks. nothing bad. No, to, to no, it's about, uh, about your choice. Chambering yeah. or weight relief. It, it is what you like. It of just depends on your taste. Yeah. yeah. Of course. And there's always the. I know the vintage nerds, they want the 59 sound. That's a nice and, one. Yeah, but that's a nice one guitar too. Absolutely. So um, when I look at the Les Pauls that I well, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> in a way. There's one 59 original Les Paul. Um, you can see on video clips I've done for the channel The World of Vintage Guitars. If, if you are on YouTube, you, you can watch that. There's a 59, which is like the best sounding 59 I know, because I usually mm -hmm. am not the biggest fan of 59 Les Pauls. Mm -hmm. More 57? 57, uh, that's, that's my thing. And here is my favorite 57 uh, in comparison to this guitar uh, a couple of years ago when this was not at that level where I just had first different pickups, second um, I didn't have the same bridge on there. So this, this was a couple of years ago compared to my favorite gold top mm. ever. Mm. Check out this video. So, As you see in the video, he's got lots of fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, I played three guitars, and the middle one was this one, which was the shittiest one of them three. Uh -huh. The last uh -huh. one was a fi original 59, yeah. not the one I, I was talking about. Um, it's another 59, which is a great one. Uh, not as good as the one that I was talking about from the World of Vintage Guitar videos. Um, but the first guitar in that clip was that 57 mm. gold top, which is like my go-to Les Paul tone. And maybe you could hear that the, the twang, mm -hmm. it, it's like a telecaster on steroids. You know that? Yeah. Yeah. By now, this guitar is better because that's the journey. I had that guitar yeah. and now I have um, a real bridge on this, uh, like a real original old bridge, yeah, old bridge yeah. 60 whatever for yeah. um, ABR1 bridge. Um, I probably have a new pickup set uh, because that's one of the sets that uh, Andreas made for this guitar. Ah, by the way, there's a little clip we have to show you about Andreas Glopmann checking out 
um, my guitar and other guitars and doing the comparison of pickups. It's funny. Just watch it. <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, you know, you think that's bullshit, but it's like, it, it's important to be like at the highest fret. So, mm. so, uh, wait a minute. This was a bridge pickup and a neck pickup. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it sounds totally mm. different ranges he knows what he's doing anyway so yeah. we, we spent hours just testing dry guitars testing the pickups different registers different notes mm. so it's our test signals we produce sorry and um, the thing with that guitar here is um, I went through several phases of improvement with that guitar mm -hmm. and one of them was the bridge definitely and then um, I also learned how important it is uh, what kind of pots there are oh, what yeah, kind yeah. of capacitors there are yeah we are talking real bumblebees now in this mm -hmm. one which was not the case probably back then yeah and um, you know I mean that, you don't need let's say real bumblebees but at but least you need a good uh, paper and oil yeah good paper and oil and um, 50s wiring is definitely my choice. Yeah, for me too. Okay, yeah. I don't know. Because what's the thing about 50s wiring is I get all the open, you know, I like to use the volume control a lot. That's what I really love about the 50s wiring, that you can turn from a, from a let's say... It doesn't only turn down the high frequencies, it also yeah. changes the mid frequencies. So, especially important for me, for example, on, on the neck pickup. Also control the mids. That's what I like about it. Yeah, me too. I have. Wait a minute. Okay, this. Oh, this is a drop D guitar. Let Let's tune this guitar back. In In tune. Ah, this was down a whole tone. <laughs> oh. Let, let me tune it. Now it's guitar tuning time. Guitar tuning time. <laughs> Single version. <laughs> yeah, we love, we love comedy. We love uh, fucking it up, yeah. 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 Another one for you. <laughs> Yeah, for example, this is a quite affordable guitar, yeah. but with good pickups and with the correct wiring and uh, paper and oil capacitors. Okay. So even a quite affordable guitar with no brand on it. <laughs> this is a 6105. Really? Yes, it is. They, they look really fat from here. Yeah, okay. I'm fat. <laughs> up is all there and that's all down to pickups electronics pots and capacitors mm -hmm. um, if I would compare this guitar it's hardware right, what is, what is it, right? 
Goto or Wilkinson. Yeah. It's, it's, but you can tell it's like not the same level. Like yeah, the, yeah, yeah, you know, it's, maybe you can hear. I try to play. And now I'm going back to. Can I have that for a second? Yeah, sure. Hmm? Let me play the same stuff on this guitar. Uh, first, we'll get a good break. Totally different story from the dry sound. But there's maybe also a question of new strings, right? <laughs> yeah, of course. But uh, but uh. still, with new strings, I know that guitar, okay? Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I, I, I hear the, the, the mid range. Yeah. yeah. No, it, the, the spaghetti are not as al dente as I like them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this one is al dente, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Al dente. Yeah. <laughs> um, ah, okay, yeah. But an affordable guitar. Yeah, it's an affordable guitar. And, and some it, nice it, modifications like this. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah? It, it does the job. Yeah, absolutely. Good okay, one. Um, what else do we have? Talking about pickups, maybe. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I have, I have pickups from, uh, well, we heard the Klopmans in, in here, which is not, probably not the final set, because already Andreas... Uh, said, ah, after this generation, I have another idea of, to map this guitar even more towards that 57 that I like so much. Which ta ta have. Talking about final things when you are a musician, <laughs> never there's never, 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 final never ever a final amplifier, never a final guitar, there's never an and not even final. a final pickup. <laughs> no, Don't believe that. Yeah, that's the thing but about. This one's really good. Yeah, yeah. it's it, it's my it's it, it's my nice list for. Um, but talking about pickups here, my good old friend Geoffrey Whitehorn from mm. the UK. Um, can, if maybe you can see him here, um, he he was the official Marshall demonstrator for years, and the guy here in the corner is Nico McBrain, yeah, 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 yeah. Iron Maiden's drummer. Iron Maiden's drummer. Uh, you know, sitting like this, mm, waiting for. Uh, waiting for his drum set. In, yeah. yeah, no, waiting uh, for Joffrey to finish and to have another round of beers. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know, this was back in the days when we were young and had beers he's a funny together. Guy. And um, he sent me a, a cream tea pickup set, uh, which is supposed to sound like uh, the 57 GT, it's called, with a certification thing. I want to try those out. I have still didn't have the time to do that. Then, when you don't have the time, can you give it to me first? <laughs> well, yeah, why not? As long as I get them back, because I know. Yeah, it's, probably. Yeah. Um, and he, here's another example of of some uh, well different style pickup is with the cream. Oh, double whites. Yeah, double whites. Um, a company called Eight Bump from uh, Belarus. Mm -hmm. um, I played those pickups in his guitar and they sounded killer when everything was all the way up on the mm -hmm. electronics, but they was the cleaning up process was not 100% mm -hmm. how I liked it. And this is like Trevor Wilkinson's new R series, huh? which I was very impressed. Maybe you should try those for, for a change because um, those are the pickups in this, in this other one, mm -hmm. in, in this one. And it's like, huh, something is right about those. Okay. But, but hey, what is right and what is wrong is also a matter of taste. Right. It's a matter of taste me. and also the, uh, a matter of the guitar you put yeah. it in. And as you say, it's also a matter of, uh, uh, how to say, the, the communication between pickup yeah. and potty. Yeah. It, 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 it makes, there's a lot of difference when, when changing the potty. Some, some work perfect with a special pickup, others don't. What I just found out when, 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 when it comes to cleaning up um, with a 50s wiring, burns pots yeah. for, for me are the best. Not, pots, not, yeah. not also, also because they, they are really light, um, they, they, they're not too heavy to turn, because they, they really clean up very fast and very nice. Mm. Yeah. Not, not that stable, so you really have to take care mm. when pushing up the knob to, to not break it, but uh, great pots. I have the question here on the chat. G Love asked Thomas, which amp are you using? 
Are there any pedals? Well, no, it's just my amp one on the vintage channel and that's it, I show you. So this is... The I use the boost, uh, which is nice because... Built in reverb. So this is M1. It's M1 as it is, period. Ah, while we're talking about M's, just one very brief one. Oli, Oli brought his um, what the is Red it? Beast. Red yeah. Beast, Red which Beast. is a, a JMP 1968. Six, late 68, right? Yeah. And uh, I bought this one in London. I can remember I, I was there with a friend, and we we just went to London with a cheap Ryanair flight to buy amplifiers. <laughs> totally stupid. But we, we stood up in the morning at 7 o'clock and, and, and took, took the papers and read these, these uh, small, how do you call it, Anzeigen? What is advertisements. It? Advertisements, yeah. 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 Private advertisements. Yeah. And we found a guy near London who sold some Marshalls and we bought both two Marshalls. <laughs> and this is a was one watt. of them. It's yeah. a 100 watt uh, uh, JMP. Yeah. It's a Plexi. It's, it's a real it's, Plexi. It's a, it's a, a PA? super PA. Yes. Yeah. But I changed it, I think, at, who did it? I think it was uh, uh, Tube, Tube Doctor. Mm -hmm. He changed it to a super lead, mm -hmm. but I also added a few other things. I, I cascaded um, the gain stages, the, the gain stages yeah. of volume one and two. I added uh, a master volume, mm -hmm. and I also added a, a, another a, a, a preface. Or post phase, post phase, post phase master. master yeah. It's in the in the back of the amplifier. Yeah. So you have all the choices to 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 tweak your plexi sound. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just for fun. That's the master. This is the master. Amp one and that's yours. Mm. Yours is a little, little different mids. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can tweak a bit, but I'm on the vintage channel, so you get an impression um, how to get close to this. But you song. also have, a, a, as far as I know, the last uh, tubes that I had in there uh, are Chinese ones, ah. the big ones. So yeah. they don't have that much mids. Yeah, yeah. these old uh, RTFs or uh, yeah. ballads. Uh, you but know. For, for, for God's sake, I, I have a good friend. 
uh, who has been uh, uh, chief uh, uh, at, at Harman. And uh, he, he uh, uh, measured lots of old tubes that I still had. And the next, next thing that I will do is to, to bring on this amplifier <laughs> and to, to uh, uh, give this little red beast baby new tubes. New old tubes. New old tubes. New old tubes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, that was the amp question, but back to uh, the guitar topic. So we talked... Pizza or ice cream? What yeah. is this about? Well, it's pizza. <laughs> Pizza. We, we could order pizza, actually. Yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe Lucas can. I take any pizza. <laughs> For me, Les Paul and that modern channel also makes a lot of sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. Soldano style. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we know yeah, who played all these yeah, tones. Yeah. Um, By the way, there's an interesting, not discussion, but somebody has been talking about the magnets. It's also yeah, an what, important thing when it comes to, to, to uh, pickups. Yeah. Um, what kind of magnet you use. In the end, when you, when you start up, maybe Al Nico 2 uh, on these old. Um, uh, humbuckers, uh, the first, uh, let's say, real 57, 59 pickups, they used a Nico 2. Some of them used a Nico 3. Later on, they used a Nico 5, which normally just means that the, the, the magnet field is, is stronger when, when, when starting at 2, 3, 4, 5, goes up to nowadays to, to, to 8 and stuff like that. Yeah. But it makes a different uh, sound, not, not just output, it also changes. The frequency, the yeah, yeah, where, where the bite is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No? For, for, yeah, for yeah. me, it's 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 maybe a way of describing. Andreas, for instance, he made his own screws to to have the perfect material, because yeah, yeah. you know these guys go all the way. <laughs> I did that too. Yeah, uh, changing changing the screws on a pickup to get less treble or maybe more treble. Yeah. yeah. So there are parameters we can change. Um, and uh, yes, well, Luca, Lucas is ordering pizza for yeah. us. That, that's a good choice. Yeah, great. Yeah, including great mushrooms. Man. Great man. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. including Let's mushrooms. Let's give a big hand for yeah. Lucas. <laughs> so um, we had the pickups. I know we can have a full episode on pickups, oh, and, yeah, yeah. and and it's like. How how to dive <coughs> in and um, of course you to find your tree in the wood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's like also you can adjust the pole pieces <coughs> so to speak to the strings a little bit. Also make it makes a big difference. Yes, the height, how close <coughs> you come Sorry. to the strings, <clears throat> and um, there's so many little details. In the end, you have to have a vision of the tone you want, mm -hmm. and then you have maybe an instrument that gives you. Um, that basic character, yeah. and then you can tweak all the, the, the changeable things towards that vision, towards that goal. Um, if, <coughs> if the guitar is having a totally different character, it's gonna be hard. Yeah. But, but if there's a certain thing that is there in a way that you can live with it, or it's, it's inspiring when you play even without you know, without the amp or whatever, um, you can then go on to the next level. But mm. let's go on to the hardware level, on to the bridge and saddle level. Oh, but we, still have yeah. a, we still have a video uh, ah. checking out pickups. Because I'll say... Uh, we still have a video about chambered guitars. <laughs> We oh, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, because yesterday yeah. you went to, to see your doctor. Absolutely, because uh, uh, how to say that there's a big discussion going on about chambering guitars, weight relief, and, and can you hear if it's weight relieved or not? Because you can't see it, and uh, um, 
I had an idea a few years ago when I went to, to an airport. It was uh, the early 2000s and, and I had uh, a, an early 90s Les Paul, a black standard. And uh, w when I went to, to, the, to, the, to the customs to check the guitar and I went through the x-ray, I saw like, oh, this is a Swiss Ooh, cheese. It's, it's probably yeah. something like it, this. It looked, looked different than this one. It had like big yeah. holes in the back of the guitar. I thought, like, oh, what's this? And then uh, I had the idea, okay, you can find it out with x-rays. And this is what the next video is showing. Hi, everybody. Um, when it comes to Gibson guitars, to Les Pauls, there's a big discussion since many years if they are weight relieved or not. So either you have to be an expert as a guitar builder to find that out by knocking on the wood. They can possibly find it out. Or you need a good friend who is a doctor and who is your neighbor who has an x-ray and we got that guy here it's my friend Dominic let's call him Doc Dom and we will find out by doing an x-ray with two guitars here we are so here we are with the first guitar and it's this one here there we're still waiting for the doctor and now we do an x-ray to see if it's hollow or not as you can see, this one here is completely hollow. This is the typical uh, weight relief by Gibson during the last years. Nice to see. From the second one that we uh, do x-rays of, we know that it's chamber. So let's see how this looks. It looks like this. Very interesting. A chambered version of a Les Paul. By the way, we already did that a few months ago with this model here. It's a Gibson Les Paul uh, R7 that I own at Gold Top. And you can see, uh, besides the fact that it's really light, it's not weight relieved. So now we're done. This is Dominic, yeah, Hi. my neighbor. Let's call him Doc Dom. Yeah? <laughs> and this, these are the pictures to see what is weight relieved or hollow and whatnot. What you see, here on the on the right side, this is my old Les Paul, uh, the R7, the gold top, that is not really relieved. And on the other side, you see a Gibson Les Paul that is completely weight relieved. So this was a funny experiment. Thanks a lot to Dominic and bye thanks bye. a lot to his team. Of course, I brought some drinks to make them happy <laughs> and uh, we see you soon again. So, so really interesting to see um, with the x-rays, what, what, what happens when, when you put them underneath, how the, the weight relief is done and uh, as, as, we, as we heard, what it uh, does to the sound. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing bad about it. If you it's like that kind different. of sound and if yeah. you like light guitars, the older we get, uh, we like light <laughs> guitars. I can, I can remember that I had a, a great Les Paul from the late 70s, it was a custom, and it had 5.3 kilos which is really a lot and every time I stood in the practice room playing this guitar it took me like 50 <laughs> minutes when my arm went like ah shit you know? it's really it's a matter of age I tell you yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, I had very concrete bass <laughs> yeah. yeah well that's the bass yeah. um, we had a question about your pedal board in yeah. between yeah let's let's talk about that real quick um, there's a tilt boost yeah, this is this is new. Okay. So uh, let's let's maybe start with it with the amplifier. Also yeah. use M1. an M1, Mercury. the Mercury edition. That's just something light modified with you a boost. Have, you have a boost that is more similar to the Iridium boost. Yeah, it's, uh, it's more narrow. Narrow. It doesn't yeah. have. Uh, it is a bit more mixed, mid focused. Mid focused, yeah. especially for solos. When so I can really wanted put a put change. in the boost a hundred percent. To, to push it really hard uh, without getting these the same muddy uh, low mids and bass yeah. to really have a mid focused um, boost. Um, but that's all. That's quite the, the normal series the rest is standard. model. The, yeah, the, the rest, rest is standard. standard. Yeah. And uh, this, at first, yeah, the, the guitar goes into this new pedal here. I found this. When looking on, on the internet, searching for, for pedals and stuff, just by chance, it's from Ref. It's called Tilt. And it's, it's, it's not only a boost, it has a very, very light gain stage that you can add with this uh, mini switch here, or you can also spare it out. Otherwise, it's just a boost 
when you turn this on, there's also just a little bit of gain that you add. And uh, you have an EQ here that is not only just, just a, a treble uh, range, it's also, it, it controls the whole frequencies going from, from pushing the low mids or more mids up to highs. And you can, you can really tweak the whole signal, uh, the whole mid spectrum where you want to have it. And you have a double uh, a bass cut. It's, it's not really a cut, it, 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 yeah, it, it's, how to say, it lowers uh, the bass at a certain frequency in two stages. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I, I saw it on, just on the video. So like, wow, this sounds good. And I, I bought it and it's, it's really perfectly working for all kinds of amplifiers. It's really good. Mm -hmm. um, and all kinds of guitars as well, or just less pause? How would yeah, you? Yeah, also also strats. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Also with an the Fender style amp. Yeah. With a strat or a Telecaster, it works perfectly. Yeah, it's really great. And uh, this one goes into where does it go? It goes into uh, an MXR Phase fifteen ninety five, which is like like a Phase ninety as a small edition. But you also have. Uh, uh, you can switch between a script logo sound uh, yeah. and you can switch between uh, the old MXR 45 the very wide wave and, and the later This one goes into this Harlow compressor for, of Bogner that I really love. Um, it works great for, for clean channels. It works also to, to boost your solo sound or even your rhythm sound. Um, it's great working. This one goes into uh, my old tone burst of Mesa. That is kind of the same concept as this one, but sounding a little different, but it's also got an, an extra gain stage here. Um, so this one doesn't really affect the sound. It just adds more gain and more sustain. That's what the, this gain stage is for. Um, this one goes into the amplifier and in the effects loop, I have the halo delay that I really like because it's very, let's see, versatile. Mm -hmm. um, we have like just by pushing these, these buttons, you have like a, different presets, 12, yeah. 12 different presets and, and it's great working. And uh, I also have in the loop, uh, a very, very cheap five band EQ by Harley Benton. Yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah, you don't believe it. It's around like 19 euros or something. <laughs> but this is the only small uh, EQ that I know that features the 600 Hertz. Yeah. That is very important when, when it comes to, to plexi yeah. marshals. Yeah. yeah. So this is just tweaked a little bit on the 600 and, and bass is reduced a little bit for the solo sounds. That's all. Do you use that as a solo boost or is this a general thing? I use it as a, as a, as a volume boost yeah, and yeah, as a yeah, frequency. Yeah, so, yeah. so when turned off, because you, you lose like, like 2 dB or something yeah, when, yeah. When, when, when you turn on the effects loop yeah. and to get on the same. So boost the volume and also these 600 hertz. Yeah. Just a little bit. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. And what is this pure <coughs> tone thing that's an... Uh, it's just a buffer. A buffer, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. To not lose any kind of signal when with these cables. Yeah. Okay, um, Hardy O, when it comes to the bridge, Thomas and Oliver, did you Smart try the ego, little wooden right? pieces yeah. that Peter Weyer puts under the bridge to shape the tone? Well, here I got them. Yeah. And guess who puts those wedges under my bridge? Peter Weyer himself. Yeah. So, um, a connoisseur of sound. Yeah, Peter Weyer is one of my heroes. He, he is Germany's uh, Steve Lukather. He's like the, the yeah, number absolutely. one studio guy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. He played everything and he knows tone and he's a Les Paul guy. Um, so, um, the, 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 what is this? The, the, the stuff is called the Zander Wedges because Zander is a guitar luthier Peter is connected to. And um, it is a combination of different woods. I don't know exactly what it is. It's like Brazilian roadwood meets the uh, the 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 mahogany. It looks like rosewood. Yeah, yeah it, it's different. It, it's actually um, also there is mm. like um, these wedges can be um, 
two dark woods or one um, like a maple meets a blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know nothing. I just was listening and Peter was doing it for me in mm -hmm. a seminar. And uh, the the idea, how, how can I describe? You know my guitar, you have seen it in that little video clip before. And it had a few dead spots and it wasn't at the point where it's now. You know, now this guitar, every fret, mm -hmm. every note talks. And that's partially because of these um, wedges. Yeah. And um, I don't know how, um, um, I, you know, I was just like patient, <laughs> the patient, and the doctor did the job for me, and I wasn't uh, not even asking for it. I, I just said, uh, "Yeah, can you get this a little more close, um, like closer to the other string and stuff like that?" Okay, and he flipped it around and did something like that, and the result is just stunning. So it even held hmm. the guitar, and it made the notes speak more. That's all I can say. And if you are interested in such a thing, uh, number one Hamburg, which is the store that. I attend uh, like twice a year for shooting the videos for the World of Vintage uh, channel. Um, I'm their presenter. Um, number one, the, the, the shop offers appointments mm. uh, that you can book and they have a look at the guitar and they also look at the hardware and, and things because, you know, they set yeah, up yeah. vintage yeah. guitars and they know, they know their shit. And then part of it can also be that wedge treatment. Yeah. So it's it's a thing um, which I, is quite interesting. I will definitely order uh, some of these yeah. because I also have two old Les Pauls from the early 70s yeah. that are great guitars, but they have a few dead spots here and there yeah. and a very weak E string. Oh, yeah. yeah, And that helps. But, and the yeah. funny thing is these are um, wedges in a way that they, you know, one side is, is that uh, tall and the other one is a bit taller. So you can uh, even press them uh, harder mm. or less mm. hard and you can it, it 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 changes the contact of the top to uh, the bridge yeah and whatever it is i don't care mm -hmm. it simply it works. works yeah that's works. that's my story mm -hmm. uh about it so uh, somebody says Halo Andy Timmons. I, I was reading he Hello Andy Timmons. Hello, hello, and, hello, hello Andy. Andy. <laughs> Andy is a good friend of mine as well. And <laughs> yeah. And anyway, um, what's the brand of the orange cable on the left of Ollie's amp? On the, the left cable. of Ollie's amp. On orange the cable. left of Ollie. Oh, you mean this one? Is this the one you're talking about? Maybe. Maybe. Well, uh, okay. It's, it's okay. more brown, but. I'm, I'm, I think it's I'm a, not it's sure. a um, I have one like this. It's a summer cable. Yeah, it could be a summer, summer cable. cable. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you use it for the for the one control. Yeah, which so it doesn't make any sound. It, it doesn't yeah. make any sound. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. the cable for the one control is just a controller signal yeah, yeah. and not an audio signal. Um, by the way, I'm totally happy about this one because uh, I, I I know that I, I called you like like yeah, ten yeah, times yeah. to get one, <laughs> and uh, I'm really happy with it because you control way more. Um, the gain stages of, of all your channels and it works perfectly. Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't have them in the web chat right now, but they will come back. So we, we you know, Blue Guitar always sells out products and... You, you can have mine, but <laughs> pay double the price. Yeah. So. For 59 Les Paul price. Yeah. 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 <laughs> anyway, um, so what can we learn about the hardware on the guitar? This is pretty. Oh, lot, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pre this is like I I tried to optimize this guitar as far as it goes. So this is an original Gibson RBR one bridge from mm -hmm. the 60s yeah. with the authentic material. So this is so to, to, to tell that is the authentic material for for all this pause is it's like a, a zinc die cast um, bridge bridge. And uh, brass. The, the saddles are made out of brass, but it's it's soft brass. It's soft brass and milled soft brass, mm -hmm. not not die cast brass. Yeah. It's it's soft brass and it's milled. Nerdy stuff, I know. Yeah, yeah. but it it's part of what creates the tone. It adds another yeah. percent here and there. If you everything are, makes a difference, yeah. So yeah. Maybe just like one half uh, half a percent here, 
and one percent here and yeah. there. But everything that you change on a guitar makes a difference. Yeah. yeah, and it adds up. So we have another bunch of bridges here. Well, oh, yeah. I, let, oh, yeah. let me see what's going on here. Can, can we actually yeah. demonstrate a few yeah. in a second or maybe yeah. two? Just to yeah, let's, let's maybe let me show show what I got here to, to the people. So I brought different things because I say during the, the pandemic, during the Corona time, we had I too had much time. Way <laughs> much too much too much time as all musicians. So I started to to work on pickups, on hardware, and screws, and and whatever is on a guitar that you can change and and see what the effect is on the sound. And uh, the main thing that I found out is, is uh, uh, how um, the bridge of a guitar affects the sound. Yeah. And uh, it, it, it does a lot. So, so when it comes to, let's say, a normal bridge, mm -hmm. let's, no, no, this one, <laughs> and this one. You're losing let's the settles take, already. I'm losing the settles. Let's take this one. This is a standard bridge of Goto. Yeah. It's sync die cast. But also with sync die cast saddles, yeah. it's perfectly working. It's it's also perfectly made. It's typically Japanese. Uh, it's also good sounding. But you have let's, let's say little how to say little trebly highs and this this uh, this attack that I personally don't want to have. Um, it, it's good resonating. It's it's uh, uh, good sounding. But but it has for me personally too much. Highs when, when it comes to the attack. Sometimes yeah. I, this is like I never tried it, but you can hear it when you when you compare this, the yeah. noise of the metal. Okay, let's yeah. hear another one. Which which one is let's this? Let's maybe take this one. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Different Got sound. lower mids. Yeah. yeah. And this one. This is the Gibson. It's got lots of mids. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and the resonance. Is... Bar 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 bar. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you can and hear this. that. Is, uh, yeah. This is different. This is a, 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 a brass, a, a solid brass of uh, ABM, mm -hmm. um, a German company. Uh, it's good sounding when you yeah. when, when when you want to have like very separated strings. Yeah. When you have like a let's say a little bit of let's say un, un, unfocused guitar when it comes to bass or string separation, this one really helps. Clean, but it, it also it also adds a color. Uh, a color, especially in the high mids, that I, depending on the guitar, that could be too much. Okay, yeah. and this one, see, it's a way higher yeah. than this one. Ah, similar. Yeah. But wait a minute. Let, let's just hear the, re the resonance. No. Yeah. All, all that stuff makes a huge difference. Yeah. And by the way, when I ch checked speakers or anything or. Next, oh, this is the hardest one, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's the go-to, yeah. yeah. And I, I assume this is kind of a fast-sounding bridge. It's very fast. It's it's good resonating, yeah. but it has these very trebly attack. Yeah, I mean you can uh, this, you this can, pick sound that you don't yeah. want to have, you know. Yeah? It's already there, just uh -huh. when, for, by nature. You but know? Uh, since a few sorry months, <laughs> they, they already built these bridges with the brass saddles. Ah. I can remember, like I think, eleven or twelve years ago, I, I told to to FGN mm -hmm. that, that of course use Goto hardware that is perfectly working to think about to to change these bridges because they can do it because they they they, they order a certain amount where it's possible to do that to to change these saddles into brass and mm -hmm. now they did it. Cool. And what what are we having here? These are the the studs. Uh, these are the no, the, no, bushings. the bushings. The yeah. bushings, yeah. yeah. And the studs. That these go are the studs. This also makes a difference um, when it comes to, to old Les Pauls, they used steel studs and steel screws. What also makes a difference on the, uh, difference on the sound. Because normally nowadays from, from the, let's say, mid 70s on until the late 90s and until they started the, the custom shop, Gibson only used zinc die cast for, for these bushings and also for the screws. Zinc die cast is not bad, but it's very damping the yeah. sound a lot. So when it comes when when you combine all that with the screws, the bushings, also the tail piece. For yeah. example, this tone pros here, this tail piece, it's a thing sync die cast. You can also hear that when you sounds pretty dead. Mm -hmm. You know? Then we take this one here. This is aluminium. Way higher, very mm -hmm. light. This also affects the sound. And this one is a very heavy heavy also from ABM, a brass. Tape piece. Mm. Lots of heights, but very 
tight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and so if you, for Heavy. example, if you have a guitar that is a bit trebly and a a bit, let's say, weak on on the lower end of the frequencies, you can tweak it, for example, with a with a brass tailpiece that also mm-hmm. makes also brass um, screws and stuff like that. You can really add add some low mids, some ni- nice sounding low mids by changing the tail pieces. Yeah. And don't forget the saddles. I mean, yeah. because the saddles make the contact between the string and the rest of Absolutely. the hardware. Yeah. And I mean, even it's a, such a tiny part, uh, it's so critical. I know from Stratocasters hmm. how important the saddles are and even the screws. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so the the, the, the real nerds also talk about the screws, not only about the saddles. Yeah, yeah. They talk about <laughs> soft brass screws. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, it's a different thing um, combining different materials, similar mm. to like the, the, the wood wedges, the zander wedges on the guitar. Mm. It actually affects the tone. And that's Absolutely. why we put mm. this kind of darker wood on the treble st- strings. Mm. It did something that I liked mm. better than this one. I was just listening. I yeah. was not playing. I was just listening to my guitar. Mm. And when it was finished, I played it. And I liked it so much that I said, don't change it. You know? yeah. Also, the thumb wheels make a li- just a little, but they make a difference. Yeah. If it's if it's brass or if it's steel or zinc die cast, so everything you have on a guitar because somehow makes a, a difference. But I wouldn't say because when, when when I always watch these, let's say, pretty nerdy internet things here and there, I wouldn't say that there's the holy grail of tailpiece, the holy grail of bridge or whatever. It really depends on your guitar. So if you have a trebly guitar, why not trying to use uh, uh, zinc die cast tail pieces, uh, 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 screws and everything. If you have like a, a let's say, a little bit of, um, let's say, muddy guitar uh, that should have more, more open highs or mids, d- d- try to use e- even the steel bridge. Yeah, you can buy steel bridges uh, or titanium um, uh, saddles. You, mm-hmm. know? you can try it, everything. There's, there's nothing bad about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I see some comments here that are <laughs> some are a bit bit massive, but anyway, our point is here: there are options, and some of them are more authentic vintage. Some of them have a certain character. It all depends on what you want. If you want to go all the way vintage, and uh, or if you want to go and balance out a certain well character of a guitar in a certain direction. There are options, mm-hmm. you know, of course, yeah. and and if you don't hear it, it's fine. But if if you hear it and you 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 want something else, there are options. Mm-hmm. That's all we are saying yeah, here. Yeah. I, I already start to read words like bullshit and stuff. Like, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, you can really discuss about what, what is bull- right and wrong, but that's you, you have to find out personally yeah. what is what is right yeah. for you. I mean, you know, what is bullshit and what's not bullshit. It you decide what's bullshit for you. Absolutely, and, somebody, and somebody else. And the might... difference is sometimes that tiny. Yeah, yeah. I can remember during Corona, sitting in my sure. my my cave down there, and and changing uh, bridges, screws, and tail pieces, and 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 listening to it. And like let's say after two hours, I like how how the fuck was the first bridge sounding? Let's yeah. try again. So it's it's really it's just small steps to to get somewhere. Um, and, and the best way to, to really compare things is to record it. If you have the possibility, yeah. change everything you have, record it, find out the, the different sound, and then try to get to the point where you want to have your guitar. Actually, it's the same with pickups. Exactly. Uh-huh. Talking about pickups, you oh, yeah. recorded a little video on pickups. Yeah. And with Not during Corona time. <laughs> no. It was an experiment with the Hoysel, uh, who does ex- excellent pickups. I love yeah. his, his, his puff repliques that he does. Uh, I, I wanted to find um, the right pickup for a certain guitar, and, and uh, he gave me the option to to send me a few pickups, also with different windings and, and everything. And, and uh, yeah, I, I, I cross tested them with the pickups of Sema Duncan and other stuff, and I just picked out four for for a result here to see if you can maybe spot the difference. Yeah, let's let's check out that video just to show you that. Well, there are differences. There are even more tra- traumatic differences than that you have in the video. Yeah. But that's a snippet yeah, be- that we can show. To, to, to say that before is it's like I really compared pickups that are very close to a puff yeah. pickup. Yeah, yeah. Maybe a little more output, maybe a little weaker uh, uh, 
uh, screws and, and stuff like that, but, but it's all about the puff sound, maybe with more power and less power. Check it out. Different pickups, and there's more options. Um, and these are just four of I don't know, maybe 15 different pickups are recorded. And as you saw in the video, I also took one pickup and sh just changed the pole piece screws. What yeah. makes a difference when it comes to a high mids and treble? Another thing we can also change are the frets on the list ball. Yeah. Um, on this one, I have 6105s, which is weird because usually we have. Um, wider frets like 6100 um, <coughs> for that big tone but I like the precision so to speak which gives me a different attack and uh, I like the, the, those frets in general and I like the tone and actually these were also the frets on that favorite 57 Les Paul that I like so much mm -hmm. so something must be right mm -hmm. on that I took the same frets for this guitar. I also like the 6105. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Perfect yeah. for me. Yeah. Okay. So frets are another thing and they are stainless steel frets. I don't like that that much because to me they last forever. But You never have to maintain them, but, but they sound pretty harsh and hard. Yeah. A little bit. Very trebly. Yeah, yeah. But Even it's also something when, when you have maybe a guitar that is a bit too mellow, we can also tweak it with frets. Yeah. yeah. And in the end, every parameter we do have can be used to tweak stuff in a certain direction. And then there are lucky combinations. And, uh, well, all I can say, if you find a guitar that has everything at the right spot, just simply buy it. You know, because yeah. then you save a lot of time. Usually when you buy a guitar and start the whole journey, it costs a lot of time. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, you can save some money on doing stuff like that, but if you find something 100% <coughs> perfect, yeah. just buy it. Yeah. I mean, when you can afford it. And that's also <laughs> one thing because, I would say, there's a, there's a whole industry yeah. earning lots of money with, let's say, close to voodoo stuff. Yeah. yeah. So um, the, the, the most important thing is when, when you take a guitar, if you want to buy it, it has to feel good, yeah. it has to work right, Technical, it has to resonate, it, it, the yeah. guitar has to be of good wood. No matter if it's, cheap, is it, if it's a cheap or an expensive guitar. I also had expensive guitar that, that somehow didn't, didn't ring. You know? So, and if this is okay, then you can start to tweak uh, it with different pickups, different tape pieces, whatever you like to do. But don't buy a guitar for like, I don't know, $300 or whatever. Um, that is not really sounding right, right from the beginning, and then start to add another thousand dollars for hardware and pickups. Doesn't it, make any sense. Yeah, it it needs to stay in a certain price range. Yeah. Even though if it, it would be an improvement, it's like it doesn't match the quality level. No. So you you are in maybe the most expensive quality level or a mid price, uh, but anything needs to be connected to that range you are in. Yeah, yeah. That, that makes Absolutely. sense. Okay, guys, I think we talked for hours. <laughs> um, let's play something just uh, f f for the fun of... Uh, let's call it pre-pizza song. Yeah, yeah, yeah because the, the pizza, pizza is waiting. <laughs> Thank you. 
this was our episode on tweaking the Les Paul, trying to make it a tone monster. I hope you could take away some of um, <coughs> our inspiration from our experiments. And yeah, it is a, it is a journey. It is yeah. a journey. And Unless, never ends, that's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, if, you, if you find the right guitar at the first sight, buy it. If not... And don't sell it, just buy another one. Don't <laughs> sell it. Yeah. yeah, he has made that mistake. Yeah, 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 many times. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But the, the good thing on my but side it's, is... it's fun to make mistakes, right? It is fun. Of course, we play shit like crazy, but that's fun. That's music and that's our life. Okay, guys, thanks for joining in. See you guys next week. And thanks, Oli Hartmann, for joining in. Go to the concerts. Go and check out his website. Thank you. And, yeah, great to have you. Thank, thanks for and inviting me. And now it's pizza me. time. Pizza time. Cheers. Pizza time.